Hey everyone, I'm Mary Beth McAndrews from Dread Central, and I am here today with Mauro Borelli, director of Mind Cage. Hello, how are you? Good, good, thank you. Um, so first off, pretty simple, what attracted you to the script for this film? Um, you know, I, my background is in art. Um, I used to be a painter for many years. So, oh, cool. yeah, so I want to try to do, I want to put together a project that kind of makes art with the uh, thriller and, um, and a little bit of supernatural. I'm always being a big fan of, uh, uh, Shyamalan, Night Shyamalan. Oh, cool. Yeah. So I thought like, how can I make something that kind of, uh, bring a little bit of my fine art work, you know, into a thriller and, uh, something with a twist, you know? And so that was, uh, that was the idea. I didn't know what the movie was going to be, but I know I want to develop something that combined those elements. Awesome. And so wait, so I want to hear more about your history as a painter. How long were you a painter? And like, what was your favorite kind of style or kind of style for painting? Well, look, I was uh, um, in Verona near Venice. Oh, and yeah. Uh, yeah. And I was uh, basically learning from a Franciscan, uh, Franciscan monk in a monastery. Uh, very classical, like the old style, like Raphael, you know, and doing restoration and stuff like that. And then I um, went to the Fine, Ars Fine Art Academy of Venice. And from there, I moved to Rome to be a painter. And uh, one day, a pretty well-known um, Italian actor, Giuliano Gemma, did a lot of spaghetti Western. And uh, he came to a studio and say, oh, we're making a movie in a Florence uh, Uffizi Museum. And we have a bunch of bad guys shooting a Raphael painting. So we need to do a copy of that exactly like the original. Go when I see the bullet actually going through the actually painting and stuff uh. like that. So I painted that and I never been on a movie set before. So when the painting was the, the replica of the Raphael was done, I took the painting to Florence and put in the museum for the scene. And I and I saw all this uh crew walking around and and I say, oh my God, it's like a painting here, but with people moving into the into the into the frame. And I and I, and, you know, honestly with you, when I was a painter, I felt lonely and I needed to be um... more, something with people. And so I figured out that that was my um a better way for me for to continue, you know. Uh, basically I I, and, and from there, I, be, I, I was a fine art. I was like a conceptual uh, artist. I worked with Tim Burton. I worked with um, some of the major, Bernardo Bertolucci, doing art for their movie. And then from there, you know, I, I move up to my writing and directing things. Yeah. That's, that's so cool. That's so cool. And especially that comparison between a movie set and a painting being very similar. I love that. But you're painting skills obviously probably came into play with creating these really awful, beautifully awful tableaus we see multiple times in this movie. And I wanted to hear more about how your involvement in styling these beautiful corpses, basically, that look like living paint, or not living, <laughs> dead paintings, essentially. Um, yeah, you know, look, I, I, I'm very interested. I was always passionate about religious uh, uh, iconography. Okay. Of yeah. Like because I've been copying Caravaggio, been copying that, and I say, I can, you know what? I can make some of those angels actually <laughs> putting those into into a, a. I mean, I don't know if I can call horror, but it has a horror element. Yeah. Oh and, yeah. And and so um, you know um, and so I I I found this uh, uh, Chintamani that was doing all the wings of the angel and stuff like that, and and this other woman in Poland, you know this. Um, um, uh, Katarzyna, that is a phenomenal um, artist that create costume for events or for uh, special artists, let's say, you know? Yeah. And so, and so we kind of put together those angels, you know? It was not that easy actually to stage them because they, they're actually real people. So they're not yeah. money. So okay, they have so they're real people standing very still, <laughs> very, and, very uh, still. Uh, and we were dealing with... Uh, um, some uh, also technicality, you know, like um, the, we, the, some of the thing we had to change from the script. Like uh, there was a, and in an, in the original script, there was one of these angels was um, found in the morning, crucified to a telephone pole. 
<laughs> you know, oh. uh, in the street. And, uh, and then when we realize, okay, uh, we cannot even go close to the cable, <laughs> all the electric and the pole. And that. So how do we do that? So it was too complicated, you know, to do it. Yeah. And, and so, you know, I was passing by a little train station. I saw a train, I said, train museum, you know, and I said, well, what about his species on the train, you know? So, so we, we had to adjust our script to, um, uh, to what we we found over there in Arkansas, where we shot the movie. Oh, that's so well, and again, like that that image of the of the angel on the train is so striking. So that's so cool. How well I thought in the script, it I think it works so effectively well with that imagery. It's and how long did it take you about to build these angels? Um, there were a combination. Some there were a combination of uh, our department, because uh, for example, on yeah. the church we crucify one in a church so there is a cross that has to be built the other part is a, a makeup which may take three four hours okay yeah, yeah, yeah. they have to be painted white and all that and uh, and uh, and the other one is um so a makeup and prosthetic some has a old nail on the head you know and, yeah and 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 the other one is the costume so all together it may take uh let's say three, three and a half hours before we shoot with the girl in there to be prepared. And then she has to be there and not moving, you know, like not even blinking. So it's, uh, um, yeah, they were like, what it was not uh, easy and was hot too. Uh, we had a couple of people in the other part and, and adjusting the angel that way they fainted, you know, they had to take them away. Oh my it was God. hot, it was very hot, yeah. Wow. Well, transitioning from, the angels to your cast. You have a pretty awesome core, like trio of cast here with Martin Lawrence, Melissa Roxburgh, and John Malkovich. What was it like directing the three of them in this film? Um, well, it was, uh, what can I say, a pleasure because, uh, you know, especially when you make a movie where your budget only allowed you to certain amount of weeks of shooting, you yeah. know, not the a big studio movie with a lot of uh, weeks and time to do it. So we have limited time. And uh, so sometimes we have to shoot five pages, that six pages, that they're very um, uh, full of dialogues. And uh, so those actors, they, they're, it's easy to work with them because they memorize, you know, like Malkovich can memorize seven pages, like, you know, and don't make a single mistake, you know, wow. as like, is a theater guy and Melissa the same. So yeah. and and and, uh, um, and Martin was also fantastic because he has a I mean stand up comedian. He can remember two hours, right? <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so that's uh, that's uh, you know having such skillful uh, people that as the gift of the memory and, 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 and the gift of being to know how to prepare themselves, it makes it much easier. So, um, you know, John and, 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 uh, and Melissa, they were working on um, hours before also revising um, some of their line. They say, oh, what about this? What about that? So very creative into the, very collaborative into the, into the story. And, uh, and Martin was, uh, focusing on um keeping his comedic comedian comedic uh, uh instinct <laughs> under control <laughs> and so you know obviously this is like a pretty grisly serial killer movie are you a fan of movies like that are you a horror fan like a psychological thriller fan do you gravitate at all towards those kinds of movies look i'm not a big fan of the typical slash horror uh um, yeah but uh, things that uh, like uh, like uh, Night Shyamalan, for example, okay. uh, he did uh, the Six uh, um, uh, Unbreakable or, or the Six Sense, and uh, that type of movie really really resonate on me, you know. So um, if it's something that has to do with uh, the mind and the psychological fear, mm -hmm. yeah, I really I really like that, and of course visual. So I will say, if I had to take a reference, I will go by. Uh, Guillermo del Toro to Shyamalan, you know, like, uh, and Guillermo del Toro, I mean, I remember the first movie, Kronos, or even, yes, and you know, he, uh, the, the, so he has this kind of dark, uh, um, yeah, so, and he's very visual too, so, yeah, and so, 
in making a serial killer movie, we've seen a lot of serial killer films. And how did you approach Mind Cage and making it feel fresh in a subgenre that we've seen a lot of? Um, I think uh, from the trailer, many people are expecting a certain uh, typical kind of structure, you know? Yeah. But I think they will be surprised. I don't think they're guessing yet. I, I see a lot of people looking at the trailer and and making already comment has, oh, we know, we know what it is. You know what I mean? Like, and I don't think they know. I think it's- uh, No, and I obviously no spoiler, but I was fine. definitely sitting there being like, oh, I can figure out who this is. And I was so wrong. So like, <laughs> it definitely does. You play with expectations really well about what you expect from a, this kind of like police procedural serial killer movie. Yes, yes, yes. And again, uh, there's another, of course, um, um, great director that I admire a lot, of is David Fincher, and 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 in oh. seven, and it's a great, great way. You know, this this film on paper, you know, because from paper to the actual final product is a lot. A lot of like, that. Yeah. <laughs> and again, we go back to the, our. We, we go back to to I mean uh, how how big of a possibility you have on on shooting the movie or what the size of the movie but um in the beginning this movie was supposed to take place in some kind of a more cold city metropolitan like uh, okay. Chicago, Chicago where it rain all the time where they were mm. over cold like that and then <clears throat> we end up to shoot in Arkansas in the summertime. <laughs> And uh, and I say okay, um, let's how we can. T so I think I thought like, well, maybe through detective kind of style. Like, uh, maybe, uh -huh. maybe I can maybe I can embrace this. Maybe I can put the mosquito sound, you know, like the the the, the mosquito net on the door, and yeah. give a more southern, you know, type of feeling, and still can turn into a nice, uh, um, you know, I think best best detective story that can take place either in a very cold, frozen, smoke and foggy atmosphere or in something very hot and trop and kind of uh, like- it's like uh, Southern like, Gothic a little bit. Yeah, like a swamp, you know? <laughs> yeah, for sure. And so um, I'm curious, what was the biggest, you've talked about some challenges, but like in looking back on the film, what was, the biggest challenge particularly when filming like a scene that was particularly challenging that you were really proud that you were able to pull off um i think it was challenging all the time because we were <laughs> under uh, under severe um uh covid the situation okay and, and uh in fact for two three days for maybe a week i had to be um directing from a motor home and uh so oh wow and and communicating because there was some of the COVID restriction that you know um, and then so I had to actual storyboard uh, each shot and on a monitor showing where the camera is and directing with a storyboard and floor plan making a floor plan with the camera moving in the track and all mm -hmm. the guy thanks God it was um, a, a temporary fix and <laughs> you know we you know but it was challenging and uh, they were like. Um, um, uh, I think, you know, when we, every time we try to do something like with the rain and, uh, uh, like we had a scene with a, with a, with a bunch of rain outside the church, uh, that become a little more difficult. Yeah. Okay. And then, so you talked a lot about how your painting history and learning with, learning painting from monks and having, you know, being drawn to religious imagery, was were you drawing from a lot of that experience, or was it interesting drawing from that experience in creating a serial killer movie that has a lot of religious themes and undertones? Like, was it really was it interesting with those two worlds kind of colliding in making Mind Cage? Uh, the the yes, the the painting. I mean, you know, the, the, the when you work as a painter, classical classical like renaissance style yeah. you basically apply to your uh, uh, method of work in certain uh classic way of doing it you know what i mean like yeah. first so i use the same methodology for filming oh, like cool. okay it's just that now the character is moving and in the painting is not moving but i'm trying to figure out what is the key moment of that scene as in the painting what is the key uh, composition 
you know, okay. and, and, and the photography and all that kind of reflect a little bit my taste on art, you know, okay. but we had a lot of art to be done here because our protagonist is actually an artist. So he draws. So some of the drawing that you see in the movie, I actually did. Oh, some, really? Some, some that were done by Roberto Ferri phenomenal painter in Italy that does uh, figurative art. And that one was Nicola Verlato, which was is not of the one of the top Italian artists. So they're a personal friend of mine because uh, we grew up, when we start painting, we were all starting at the same time and now they are very famous painters. So now I say, okay, you have to help me put your art in a, in a movie. That is it was a good painting in there, yeah. There's incredible paintings. And then my final question for you is if you could program your perfect double feature with Mind Cage, what movie would you pair with it? Um, so I hear people saying Silence of the Lamb just because they compare the fact that there's a pre guy in a prison and a woman go to interview him. But I don't think uh, that comparison uh, is only superficial. Um, uh, I will say the sixth sense some, somehow. Okay, cool. I love that. Awesome. And, well, uh, yeah, and um, yeah, that's probably sixth sense. Cool. Yeah. Well, Mauro, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me about Mind Cage. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much.